Hi, and welcome to my next installment of the IUCAB Camper Mods. So in this episode, we'll be talking about electrical. And if you're like me and you bought your camper without any modifications done already, there's going to be some issues you encounter along the way. And I'm just going to talk about some of the decisions I made to install a basic electrical system. So in the video, I'm going to be talking about three main parts. One is installing solar, because when you buy your camper, it comes with a jack up here, an Anderson plug, but obviously no solar panel unless you purchase that too. So we'll be mounting a solar panel in part one. In part two, we're going to be taming the wire mess. When you buy your camper, the cable just comes down from the solar panel and all the electrical accessories in this conduit and they are uh, just not attached to anything. So You'll see me install a uh, breaker box in this. And then the third issue that I encountered, uh, I wanted to isolate my camper's electrical system from the car battery completely. So in the third part of the video, I'll be discussing uh, rewiring the third brake light of the camper so that it is not using the common negative as the rest of the electrical accessories for the camper. So looking forward to showing you those details. Okay, so I'm here to attach the um, MC4 connectors so I can attach the pre-wired solar cables to the cord that will then go into my battery. This cable from my battery has the positive as the male, which means we need to get a female MC4 onto the uh, positive wire that's installed in the AluCab from the factory. So the internal connectors are crimped on. The negative or the uh, female MC4 connector gets the male inner plug, and the male MC4 connector gets the female inner plug. So you just have to unscrew. This is the female, so it's going to go onto the positive. Slide those on. That just clicks into place, and you just have to tighten this, which on this one I can do by hand. And then for the mail, same process. Slide this on, push this on until it stops. came with these tools to tighten, but uh, this one was pretty easy to hand tighten. So that's just about it. And then you now see that the red wire is going to the positive. So there we go. I'll be able to connect this to the battery once the solar panel is on the top. So I have the solar panel on its mounts, 
Now I'm just going to manage these cables. I got an adapter that goes to the uh, Anderson plug from the default plugs, the MC4 connectors from the solar panel. So all I'm going to do is zip tie these here. Anderson plug's gonna come out to this side. So I'm just gonna attach it through this hole. And I can tighten that later after the panel's mounted. All right, the solar panel's installed and on top of the truck. You can see the cables are coming out right there. And then it plugs right into the camper's Anderson plug. And then there's wiring already pre-run through the body of the camper. The camper's wiring is right here. I added on these MC4 connectors so that I could attach to the adapter cable that came with my battery right here. You can see it had the MC4 connectors and then it's running right into my battery up here. The truck's sitting in the shade right now, but you can see that uh, there is still some solar power coming in. All right, now on to wiring the lights into the battery. <laughs> Passenger side, rear panel next to the door, and this is where the wiring comes out the wiring harness and the solar, and then they terminate down here from the factory. Got this harness with all these leads. I've already hooked up the solar panels, you've seen that already, and now I'm going to run these wires up to a panel, um, the junction box, fuse box, um, on a panel right here. So I've installed these L brackets. These are um, 8020 L brackets that I just uh, put into the channel. They're on each of the corners. And now I'm gonna put in panel I made. So the panel is going to sit in just like that and I can screw the fuse box onto it and then run all the wiring in there. I'll be back in a minute to explain how I'm going to rewire the third tail light so it does not use the common negative for all of the lights inside the camper. Alright, I'm here at the high brake light, which goes into the light right there, and is spliced into the main wiring harness right here. here. So I'm going to leave the brown and purple alone, but right here where you can see the blue negative from the tail light is spliced into the pink common negative 
um, from the camper wiring harness. I'm removing it from the pink and I'm going to splice it into one of the unused wires from the harness and I think I'll just put it into black right here. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so we're back with the factory wiring harness in the back of the ID cab camper. And this part of the video was talking about the modification I made to the third tail light. It's right here, the purple wire. As installed by my installers of the camper, it's still connected to the blue positive going into my, tapping into my passenger side tail light. The black wire is new. It used to be, the negative used to be connected to the common negative for the camper, which is the pink wire up here. It's now connected to the black. So the pink wire, which still has, it's the negative for my lights, USB ports, and cigarette plugs, that is now isolated, so it's only camper-related negative on that wire. All right, so electrical wiring for the camper is now finished. You'll see the lights are functioning. They're running off of my battery. All the other ports, USB ports and the cigarette plugs are all functional now. And you can see on my little wooden panel, I've installed this little junction box. It has a breaker box inside it that I'll show you in a second. All the wiring from the factory harness is running into the left side of the box over here. And the lights are powered from my battery, which goes into this junction box on this little plug right here that I just screwed into the top of this junction box. This wire uh, goes down and plugs into my battery, which is right here. This is a Blue Eddy battery, but I don't really think it matters what kind you get. Uh, this is a cigarette. It's a regulated 12 volt cigarette plug that I have going up and plugging into my junction box. When I get to camp, I can just put the battery in the back, plug it in, and theoretically everything works fine. And inside of this box, I just have a little breaker box and a fuse box. Um, and you'll see my wiring from that plug just goes into that fuse box. You need to really pay attention to the uh, polarity of these wires. Uh, unfortunately, this plug I got uh, has the red wire, which the uh, typically positive wire, is actually the negative in this case just because of these SAE plugs that I'm using. So you have to make sure you actually use a meter to read the polarity of the power coming in on the wires just to make sure that you're connecting the right wire to uh, the fuse box. So that's it. So one thing I forgot to cover in my wrap-up video of the wiring is that uh, I don't think this box is necessary. I just wanted a cleaner look, a nice clean solution, but I don't think you need it. And um, in fact, it was kind of difficult to get the fuse box to sit in there flush because there were some plastic nibs that I had to uh, grind off. So I'm not entirely sure I would recommend doing this, but if you do want a clean look, you might be able to find a more suitable uh, box like this or use a smaller fuse block. I used one that had 12, uh, 12 inputs and I don't think you really need that many. The camper only has three by default and if you were to add something like a fridge and a water pump you might only need five or six. So I'll just leave that up to you if you want to do that too.